everybody, welcome to episode 67. We are heading into week four of our lockdown here in Britain. They have extended our lockdown. A lot of people thought after three weeks they'd be out enjoying with the April sun, but it turns out that we are into a longer lockdown period, as is most people around the world. Uh, first of all, I just want to thank everyone who's come out and supported us on the website. You know, it really means a lot. You know, so thank you to everyone who's ordered off the website. We've shipped you know, to locations that we've never even shipped before today. I think we did one to Wisconsin in the, in the US, so it's another state off our list. So thank you very much to everyone who's come on and supported us. It really, really means a lot. Today's episode is a little different. Um, I keep saying that, actually, last episode was a little different, but this is, this is, this is a little different as well. So recently, I'm, I'm going to flip this around. Usually I tell you about what the tea is, where it's from, its region, its elevation, I'll tell you a, little bit, a, bit, a bit about the estate, and then I'll taste the tea. Today I'm going to flip it around. I'm going to do the tea first, and then I'll come on to what this tea is. Um, because this tea is something a little bit different to what we've had on the show before, and it's actually my first time trying this particular tea. I've never had a style of tea like this from uh, this particular place. So, what have we got here? Black tea leaf. It is, uh, the, the thing on this is, uh, the, the grade on this that I've been told is golden flowery broken orange peco. It's a little different to uh, the, the flowery broken orange pecos that I've seen in Sri Lanka. Um, and, you know, it, it looks very different and I'll tell you why. First of all, if I look at this leaf, if I was to look at this leaf as a taster, looking at black tea, what would I think of it? What kind of grade would I give? 10 being a top grade, you know, one obviously being a poor grade, right? What am I looking for? In this leaf, what does it look like? Well, for a leafy grade of tea, for what it says on the packet, it looks a little brown. It's black and there's, there's, there's darkish black, and there's, but there's a lot of, you know, rusty, rusty brown in this. The other thing that I noticed from this tea is that the particle size is not even. There is huge unevenness in, 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 uh, in this particle size. I, it, it's not appealing. It it doesn't fit. Like there's, you know, there's. I'm gonna I'm gonna bring the camera in so that you guys can see today what I mean by this. And this is very very important. Particle size and grading, you know, matter. So if I take that little bit of tea there, look at how different. I'm gonna move over some of the some of the teas that that you can see here. Right. Look at how there is a difference in particle size. Can you see? Then this little tiny sample of tea that I've taken out. Look at how different the particle sizes look. I mean, here you've got a long wiry grade. Here it's a bit more, you know, flaky. This is certainly very flaky. And this is what I mean by a tea that, you know, that isn't, that, that doesn't, you know, mix well. You know, this is almost like a, a blended mix. It almost looks like it hasn't been sifted, to be honest. When you, when you sift tea, when you make tea and it comes out of the dryer, you have multiple grades of tea. So if you're doing leafy manufacture like this, You'll, you know, you'll have all your, your, your OP grades, you'll have your FBOP grades, you'll have your broken grades, and, and so on and so forth. And you've got to start to separate your grades in, so you'll have, you know, all your OP ones, all your OPAs, all your OPs, all your FBOPs, and the list goes on. This looks like it hasn't even been sifted yet. There, it, it, there's a lot of mixed particle in it, and it doesn't show that it's, the, the, that it's been sifted well. The other thing about it is that it has this brownness to it, you know? I'm going to bring two other teas in today, because I've just looked at this, I haven't tasted this one yet. I'm going to bring two other teas in today to show you an example of what I mean by good grading. So this is an OP, this is an OP1 grade of tea, but if you look at the particle size there, you can see that all the particles look even. Even particle size and consistency in the leaf is very important. So if you're buying black tea, this is something that you should be looking for. Just looking at a tea and saying, oh look, it's large, leafy, it's whole roll leaf. Yeah, you know, but there's more to it than it being whole roll leaf. Now, touching on the point of this non-whole roll leaf that a lot of people uh, say is bad tea, well, this is a tea known as BOP. Um, this is a typical grade of tea that we make up country Sri Lanka, smaller particle size, but if you want the strength, if you want color, if you want, uh, if you want a lot of flavor, at teas that grow at a higher elevation, you want to go for a smaller particle size. So if you look here, again, you know, yes, this is BOP, but look at the particle size. 
everything is even. You don't have any uneven particles in this type of tea. So in whatever grade that you're making, whether it's, you know, the, the orthodox rotavane teas like this, or the fully orthodox teas like, uh, like here, you want to have evenness in particle size. It's very, very important. Look for that when you guys buy your tea. If you're, if you're you know, choosing to buy tea from somewhere else, or you're, you know, you, you've currently got this type of tea, pay attention to that. It's very, very important. I'm just gonna put this tea away, and I'm gonna put this one away, and I'm gonna get on to the tea that we've got at hand today. So, marks out of 10 for the leaf. Do you know what, I'm gonna give it about a five. I'm gonna give it a five, I'm gonna give it a middle of the road. It's not terrible, it's not stalky. So if we were to say why, why, why wouldn't it be terrible, and there's a little bit of stalk here that I've, that I've picked out. You know, it's not stalky, it, it's, it's not littered with stalk. Um, it's not completely brown, and in terms of smell, is there much of an aroma coming off it? A little bit of a biscuity smell coming off it, in all fairness. Nothing much. Um, give it a five, man. It's, it doesn't pop out and say, hey, I'm a really good tea, but at the same time it doesn't say, hey, I'm a really bad tea. Just off the leaf. Let's look at the infusion. Well, infusion to leaf... And this is why you must do all three as a taster. You must look at all three because sometimes you look at a leaf and you think, you know what, it doesn't look too good, but then you liquor it and it, and it becomes something different. And this, is, and this is exactly what you've got here. Liquor-wise, if you look at the infusion, we, I've always said you always need to have a bright coppery infusion. And if you look at this, this is exactly what that is. Very bright, very, very coppery. It's very, uh, in terms of infusion, it's a, it's a very good infusion. If you actually look at the, uh, if you look at, if you have a smell of it on the nose, you know, this is very biscuity. You can, you can almost smell a depth of flavour coming through just the leaf. So, you know, you get a, a forest flavour, big briskness out of it, a little bit of malt, maltness coming through, but on the whole, Infusion, it looks very good. And that infusion, actually, if you can achieve an infusion like that in your tea manufacturer, that's like an eight, an eight, nine, I would say, in my opinion. If you look at the cup color now, looking at it, the cup color is very bright. There's a slight golden rim to it. It's very bright, reddish. It's very appealing. It, it looks like a very, very nice cup, you know? Very nice cup. So, this is why it's important to look at all three. From what the leaf looks like, the leaf I would grade as a five, this I would grade as an eight. I haven't tasted this yet, but this looks good, you know? This is why you must do all three, because sometimes, fine, the leaf might not look good, and you can go back to a producer and say, hey, look, if you just cleaned up this leaf, if you sifted it a bit better, you know? If you sifted it a bit better, we could, you know, we could actually achieve a better taste in the cup overall. Infusion is good, let's have a taste of this tea. So, what do you taste here? It's very brisk. You get a big multi character on it. But there is an element of thinness in this cup. It doesn't show in the color. When you actually taste it, it's a little thin on the palate. Um, it's a little thin on the palate and Although the cup color is there, there is an element of thinness. Now, what is this tea? Bit thin. What is this tea? This tea is actually, it's not a salon, we have a lot of salons on the show. This is actually a Kenyan tea. Now, Kenya is the world's largest exporter of black tea. Kenya is the, wor the world's third largest producer. It's the world's first largest exporter. It overtakes Sri Lanka simply because it's a larger country. It produces more tea. It does not produce a lot of this tea because the majority of Kenyan teas actually produce CTC, cut, tear, and curl. Now, this is the type of tea, if you're, if you're in the UK, a lot of people still assume that a lot of their tea comes from India, it comes from Ceylon. The majority of teas that come to the UK do not come from India, Ceylon, they come from East Africa, and a lot of them have Kenyan, uh, Kenyan uh, leaf in them. Kenya makes a lot of CTC tea, and when you look at a Kenyan CTC, I think, I think, I think Kenya does wonderful CTCs. 
They're very bright, they liquor very fast. I don't think Sri Lanka does good CTCs. And you know, once we tried to, we tried making a CTC blend for, for a client once, but to be honest, for the type of tea that they wanted, you have to use a Kenyan component. The, you will not mimic that type of color and that type of character that you get from Kenya. Their teas are red, they're brisk, they're very strong. You just, for, you know, we, we, we can't make that type of CTC in Sri Lanka. I was speaking to a friend of mine in Colombo, he's an Indian, and he produces tea machinery. And he said to me, you know, his biggest market that he sees coming up um, for orthodox tea machinery, which is what we make, which is the type of tea that we produce in Sri Lanka, um, you know, the biggest threat to that market will actually be from Kenya in the future because the Kenyans are starting to move towards producing orthodox tea. And that is what you've got here. This is a Kenyan orthodox tea um, made in the Nandi Highlands. This is up in the Rift Valley in Kenya. So Nandi is a town south of Eldorak. So if you think of Nairobi, if you go west of Nairobi, up the main uh, road up there, you'll get to a town called Eldorak. If you go south of Eldorak into the Great Rift Valley, you will hit Nandi County. And this tea estate, Emrock tea estate, is in Nandi County. And it's one of the few uh, tea producing uh, estates that make orthodox tea. Now, a lot of orthodox teas like this from Sri Lanka go into the Middle East. They're southern made teas, so they're growing at a far lower elevation than, than what this Nandi is produced at. And they're going into the Middle East. And the Middle East look at leaf, they're not so much of a liquoring market, but they look at leaf. And, 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 and this is the main market for these southern teas in, in Sri Lanka. If Kenya came into the market, it would look at threatening that type of Middle Eastern, uh, that type of Middle Eastern market. However, although I think there's a lot of potential in this tea, it's just missing a beat. It reminds me a little bit of a mid-grown salon tea. So a tea from Candy, that where we do where we do uh, orthodox orthodox tea manufacture there, in the cup it tastes a little like a candy. It has it it has elements of briskness, but it, it just feels thin on the palate here. Mm. It just feels thin on the palate. I can't help but think that it's partly thin on the palate because of this type of leaf. This is this open flaky leaf that is in this. I feel that if they rolled it a lot better, if they twi if they if they put this through the roller, if they rolled it a lot better, you would have a far far better tasting tea, and you'd have a lot more flavour. This tea grows at about, if I'm not mistaken, it's about two thousand meters. If I haven't got my conversion wrong, it's about six thousand feet, which is around the elevation of a new Aurelia. You will never get the thickness of this cup in a new Aurelia. A new Aurelia will be will be light. You know, you will not get this kind of colour coming out of a Noralia tea. This is a very interesting tea, and I think for salon tea producers, it really opens your eyes to think, you know, what competition is doing around the world. If you're Kenyan, I think there's a lot of potential in this tea. This really has, you know, opened my eyes, and I think that, you know, if they're able to, you know, perfect their manufacture, and over time I'm sure they will, um, there is a lot that this, that, that this estate can do, you know. Elevation, soil conditions, everything plays a part in how your tea tastes. And you know, part of the reason why I think that this cup has such a nice color also is because Kenyan tea bushes are far younger than, than a lot of the tea bushes that you find in, in Sri Lanka. You know, some of our high grown teas, you know, you've got bushes that are over 110 years old, um, you know, still on plantations. Many plantations will have a 70 30 or 60 40 split between old seedling tea. And VP in Kenya, it's very different. They have complete VP teas because their industry mainly started and, and took shape in the 50s and 60s, where a lot of Sri Lankans actually went out and set up plantations uh, on 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 you know Kenyan land. So there's a lot of potential here in this tea. There's also a lot of potential for Ceylon producers who aren't making good tea to come back and say, hey, you know what? We have a very unique agroclimate, being being an island. We really must stop just producing thick, colory teas and really go for flavor. Concentrate on flavor, concentrate on aroma, because when you concentrate on those factors, you have a unique selling point in the market, as opposed to just making thick, colory tea and churning out tea just for the commodity market. There's a lot of producers out there who are, who are doing that. 
And you know, this is where good plucking comes in and this is where you know, good manufacturer practice comes in and where you can make good quality tea like, like what I've got here or even with the BOP that I showed you earlier. For Kenya, you know, in some ways, they're the new kids on the block and there's a lot of potential in this tea. So, you know, all in all, what would I give this tea? I'd give it about, you know, what would I give this tea? <coughs> I don't have coronavirus. <coughs> Some tea went down the wrong <coughs> pipe. What would I give this tea? You know what? I'd give it plain. I'd give it about a six, seven. I'm just going to add a tiny bit of milk, actually. Because when you think of Kenyan teas and you think of that robustness, you think of that briskness, you think of that maltiness, you know, how does it take well with milk? Well, let's just add a spoon. You know, surprisingly, look at the cup color. A very, very nice cup color coming out of it. It's almost golden, you know. For an orthodox tea, golden cup color, very appealing on the, on, on the eye, you know. How does it taste it with milk? Well. Mm. The milk does actually overpower it, you know, although it has that nice cup color, the milk actually does end up overpowering this tea. I think Emrock has a lot of potential. I think that, you know, the tea is there, but is it is it ready to move into the next league? Just not yet. I think with a little bit more perfection in their manufacture, they can turn this into a, into a crapper tea. Um, you know, and, and it's, it's something I'm definitely going to keep my eye out for in the future because I think there's a lot of potential in this, in this, in this tea. I hope you guys are well. I hope you guys have been enjoying the PMDT Buyers Clubs. We've been able to do a lot more of these. Join me next Thursday. I'm going to be doing a live afternoon tea session from my kitchen. I'm hoping to have a friend on, but if not, join me. I'll be here at 3 o'clock next Thursday. Facebook. Go onto Facebook. Jump onto Facebook Live. I'm going to be doing an afternoon tea session. I'll be tasting our breakfast afternoon and Earl Grey teas with foods that you have for afternoon tea. Simple foods, so we're going to be doing a cheese and tomato sandwich, uh, sweet scones, plain by the way, not, not cheese, uh, and a biscuit. Um, so simple foods that you can make at home. If you want, make the foods at home. Buy the teas online. We're doing our planters breakfast, uh, our planters range of teas in 100 gram packets. Buy those. And I'm going to be doing a tea pairing session and I'll also bring in three other teas to show you if you've liked, if you've enjoyed doing it with the planters range of teas, what you can move on to next to try these simple foods in your house because no one is going for any afternoon tea, let alone any of our 500 pound golden tip afternoon tea down at the Rubens. So jump on Facebook Live next week. I will see you then and until then, stay safe and happy sipping.